Dear all, Namaste. In this video, I will be discussing about different lateral neck swellings and their differential diagnosis. The lateral neck swellings may arise from submandibular triangle, carotid and muscular triangle, and posterior triangle. Most of the times, they will remain in their triangle only, but sometimes they may involve more than one triangle on the lateral neck. Let's discuss about submandibular swellings. The most common swellings in the submandibular triangle are level 1b lymph nodes, which are basically due to infection of the oral cavity or sometimes oropharynx also. When the submandibular gland gets infected or enlarged, it will be seen as a swelling in the submandibular region. By far, the inflammation of submandibular gland is the second submandibular swelling after lymph nodes. Occasionally, it may be difficult to differentiate level 1b lymph node from enlarged submandibular salivary gland. To differentiate this, we use bimanual palpation or bidigital palpation. The submandibular gland is bimanually palpable, whereas the lymph nodes are not bimanually palpable. Cold abscess, plunging ranula, and mandibular tumors also may present in the submandibular triangle. In this picture, you can see a granula and occasionally that may plunge to the neck from the myohyoid muscle. The next is carotid and muscular triangle. Again, lymph nodes are the most common swellings in the carotid and muscular triangle also. Level 2, level 3 and level 4 neck swellings are found in carotid and muscular triangle. Level 2 is also called as upper, level 3 middle and the level 4 lower jugular lymph nodes because they are in relation with the internal jugular vein. Thyroid swelling are the second most common swellings in the lateral neck in carotid and muscular triangle. The thyroid swelling may be either unilateral enlargement, solitary thyroid nodule, or may be a part of multinodal goiter, may be benign or malignant swelling. Branchial cyst and parotid tail tumors also present in the carotid and the muscular triangle, basically in the carotid triangle in the upper neck. Carotid body tumor is found in the carotid bifurcation and it's a paraganglioma, which is very vascular tumor and pulsatile tumor. Or sometimes carotid aneurysm might be found in the lateral neck. External laryngocele is not very common, but may present in the lateral neck. Cold abscess may present in the carotid triangle. Sternum astroid tumor of the newborn is a misnomer. It is a hematoma, which is found in the lateral neck in relation to the sternum astroid muscle on the its entry aspect basically in the lower one third. The swellings in the carotid and muscular triangle may be congenital or acquired conditions. Let's discuss about the posterior triangle swellings. Again, lymph nodes are more common in the posterior triangle. If there is a hard node or firm node in the posterior triangle which is present for longer time, we have to think of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis lymph nodes are more common in the posterior triangle in relation to other triangles. Metastatic tumors might be present in the posterior triangle, especially from the nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Cystic hygroma is congenital condition of the lymphatic sac, usually due to separation of the jugular lymph sac from systemic lymphatic system. This presents in the posterior triangle. Sometimes it may present with dyspnea in a newborn baby. Pharyngeal pouch or zincus tuberculum may present in the lateral neck in the posterior triangle. Cold abscess, trabecular tumors and occasionally subclavian artery aneurysm also may present in the posterior triangle. It is important to note that most common swelling in the neck is the neck node, maybe level 1b, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5 in the lateral neck. So you should know how to examine the neck nodes in your examination. Please like my videos and subscribe my channel Dr. Krishna Koirala ENT. I'll post more videos like this for MBBS and EMS. ENT students. Thank you. Thank you very much.